Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Big Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Friday, February 2nd, 2024. Now if you like what you see, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my bank shop, Best Bet College Hoops, you can find us at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Friday's small card in college basketball. First up, we see St. Bonaventure and Dayton. This one's going to be a 7 p.m. Eastern start time. It's going to be on ESPN2. Like most Fridays this time of year in college basketball, not my favorite card. You know, there's 100, over 100 games tomorrow in you know, college basketball for Saturday's card. So no reason to go crazy on Friday night. I'll be treading lightly. But in this matchup, probably one of the better games on the board entertainment-wise for the college card in St. Bonaventure, Dayton. And, you know, I think St. Bonaventure, when you look at how well they're playing as of late, they won their last two games against top 100 teams in Ken Palm, uh, St. Joe's and VCU. The St. Joe's game was a blowout win for St. Bonaventure. And while this team's not necessarily a great true road team this year, they do have a few true road wins under their belt, including a really solid one against VCU back on January 3rd. I just think St. Bonaventure really balanced team in Dayton. They are very tough. We know this is the best team in the conference. 17-3 overall, 7-1 in conference play. Not just the best team in the conference, but one of the best teams in the country right now. But I think St. Bonaventure, like I said, a balanced team fundamentally. They take care of the basketball. They force turnovers. They should have a nice advantage on the glass in this game. You know, Dayton on the other side, they rank 213th and 260th in offensive and defensive rebounding percentage. St. Bonaventure is a top 100 rebounding team on both ends of the court. So we should expect some second chance looks for the Bonnies offensively. St. Bonaventure, a good shooting team, especially from the perimeter and the free throw line, top 10 in the country. And Dayton on the other side, we know they're a great shooting team. They're seventh in the nation in three-point shooting. They get 39.5% of their points from the perimeter. But St. Bonaventure, a good three-point defense, top 100 in the nation. I think St. Bonaventure matches up pretty well here. This is the first of one meetings between these two teams. They're not going to play a second game, at least in the regular season, maybe in the conference tournament. Wouldn't be surprised to see that. But in this matchup, I think St. Bonaventure competes, covers a number, maybe pulls off the outright upset, but I'll take the points just in case. Next up, we see Sienna and Ryder. This one's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be on ESPN+. You know, Sienna, we know this has been a disappointing season for the Saints. They're 3-17 they're and 17 overall and 2-7 and seven in conference play. And they have one of the weakest offenses in college basketball. The defense has not been terrible, but the offense is ranked 357th in adjusted offensive efficiency, 361st in turnover percentage offensively. And to make matters worse, at least as, as of late, the two leading scorers for this team have been out with injuries. So it's really tough to love Santa's chances offensively and on the road without your two leading scorers, potentially. You know, it's a lot of uncertainty there, but uh, I, I just don't think Sienna has a good enough day offensively to keep up in this game. Ryder playing pretty good ball as of late. They've won their last two games and four of their last six, included two true road victories in their last two games against St. Peter's and Mount St. Mary's. Mervyn James, I think, is one of the best players in this conference. He's averaging just under 20 points per game and just under 7 rebounds per game. A guy that can put up 20, 30 points in, in a conference game, no doubt about it. I think he'll have a big day here, and I think Ryder wins this game going away. I'm going to lay the points here with the Bronx at home. Next up, we see Fairfield and Iona. This one's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern, also on ESPN+. I'm going to look at the total in this game. I actually like the under in this one. I, I think both offenses are a bit overrated. I think Iona's defense especially is underrated right now. They're ranked 172nd in adjusted defensive efficiency, despite teams shooting really well against that Iona defense. I think going forward, we're going to see some positive regression for the Iona defense. They force a lot of turnovers, and that can lead to some fast break points, which we wouldn't want to see in an under. But Fairfield does a good job of taking care of the ball. Really, both teams do. So I don't see a lot of uh, you know turnovers forced and fast break opportunities for either of these teams. Iona also looks to slow the game down offensively. They're 237th in average possession length offensively. So I see a slower play pace game, especially with the home team. I think they're going to dictate the pace in this one. Fairfield, I I've mentioned I think their offense has been overrated this year. They rely on making a lot of tough shots. They're a good three-point shooting team, but they take a lot of low percentage shots, and we're starting to see that offense regress. We saw the last game against uh, Quinnipiac, only 64 points at home in that one in a loss. So I'm going to take the under in this game between Fairfield and Iona. Next up, we go to the Ivy League as Princeton takes on Yale. This one's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Two big rivals in the Ivy League. These are probably your two best teams in the conference right now. They're both top 100 in Kempom. And, you know, both teams are in good form overall. Yale is on a six-game win streak and 4-0 in conference play. Princeton was on a nice win streak as well, and they were 3-0 to start conference play, but it did lose its last game at uh, Cornell. It was a blowout loss, 83-68 the final score. 
doesn't have to be a big concern for the Princeton Tigers here. You know, your third straight true road game, you already have a, t a target on your back in the conference because you won the conference last year. You made a nice run in the NCAA tournament as that 15th seed. So you're the team to beat. You're the team that most teams are, you know, really playing up for in, in conference play this year, you know, beyond the rivalry that's already there. I think Yale finally gets to play a home game. They've not played many home games as of late, but they played still really good basketball on the road. And I think these are two similar teams. They're very balanced teams fundamentally. Take, they take care of the basketball, strong on the defensive glass. Should be a competitive game, but I like Yale's chances here. I think they are the slightly better team, and they're in slightly better form, you know, with, with Princeton not looking great in that last game. At home court advantage to the, to the mix. I'm going to go with Yale here and lay the points. Next up, we see Butler and Creighton, the final game for Friday's card in college basketball. This one, 9 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Yeah, I think it's a good time to fade Butler in this matchup because it's on a three-game win streak, and you got to give him credit for those victories. Any win in the conference is impressive, but two of those three wins were against the weakest teams in the conference in the Big East in Georgetown and DePaul. The other one was a home victory in double overtime against Villanova. Really impressive win over a team and a program that's dominated this conference in the last decade plus. However, I worry about a letdown now going forward in, in this matchup uh, because of that double overtime emotional victory for Butler. And now you know, it's a completely different matchup on the road against Creighton, who's also in great form. They've won their last three games and seven of their last eight games. They are still one of the teams to beat in this conference. They're a very balanced team fundamentally. They get a lot of really good shots up offensively and defensively, top 15 in just the defensive efficiency. I, I just think Creighton is way too much for Butler. A letdown spot. The, the price is really good because of that Butler three-game win streak. Got to fade Butler here. So give me Creighton. I'm going to lay the points at home. And that's it. Those are the games for Friday in College Hoops. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Ronelli. Good luck.